Man, a little bit of red paint. That's going to look good. Welcome back to the garage. All right, welcome back, everybody. About uh, 3 30 or so, Wednesday. Back over here following painting this side of the body. Looks pretty good. No, uh, no runs and no, doesn't it appear to be any, um, any cratering or if there is, it's pretty minor. There's a couple spots right here, but not too bad. Several dings and dents and stuff that now you can really see that, that I, of course, expected. Um, I had mentioned in the last video, I got a little bit of dirt up here. I don't know if you can see that. That'll just all brush out. I'm not really concerned with it. But the paint that I mixed up for this is still sprayable. So I think instead of moving on to any real body work, I think I'm going to continue to work my way around here and now move on to getting the back of the car stripped. So that the boot area here, I think I got enough paint there to, to paint this out. Probably not enough to do the other whole other side. So I'm going to get going on that right away and then see what the timing looks like to try to, to line it up so that I get uh, enough time to put two wet coats on here right prior to getting out of here tonight. So that's the path ahead for tonight. All right, so this may be a no-brainer for a lot of you guys, but I went to Walmart the other day and picked up these craft sticks. I think there's about two bucks a pack or so, so 45 in here and it's 75 in here. Little stir sticks for the paint. Um, cheaper than, God forbid, you go and try to buy stir sticks from Amazon or something like that. And the Lowe's or Home Depot will give them to you, you know, the standard old stir sticks. They, and they give you a couple at a time and you gotta run out there and everything is just easier for me to buy. But I got 45 here and 75 here, so I don't foresee myself ever running out. So just as an idea to, uh, to get something a little bit cheaper or maybe a little bit more convenient. So nothing too extreme here. Uh, pretty pretty brain brainless grinding here. Just going to take off the sail plate. And this is where I showed you where those heavy duty cracks are and everything in the paint. So I'll get all that down to bare metal. That should be relatively easy. The, the more difficult parts are going to be getting in inside the... Uh, the channel of the boot lid here but I've got the wire brush to displace enough distance to, to be able to let me get in there. Um, got a couple spots that I noticed in some photographs yesterday if you can see you got a big old gaping hole right there I'm gonna have to do something about that fill that in some way probably just with weld metal I don't think it's quite big enough for a patch so I want to do that before I get paint too far into that but otherwise I'm just gonna go ahead I'm not gonna record it this time because uh, you know, I did like six hours of recording and edited it down to about a, a minute. Kind of boring, so I'll just uh, come back and check in. One thing I will point out before I get going here is if you can see that little lip right here. Now on the other side, I'm pretty sure that was lead. Um, so we'll see what it looks like. Also, that hole right there, which would be a um, hole for, for snaps, that's just screw in there. I'll show you the other side. I think the other side's in much better shape. Yeah, you notice the other side's not all uh, blown out, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of weld repair there, too, to, to shrink that hole back up, and then uh, probably fill it with weld metal and then drill it back out. That'll be a little tricky for lining everything up, but one of the nice things about these is the snaps are not going to have to be exactly in the right place. Anyway, just showing you that, so we'll see what's underneath this, uh, this stuff here. All right, well, I got... Mostly the top of the sail plate done and everything else. The only stuff that I really don't have done is inside the channel for the boot lid. That's going to be a pain in the rear since it's obviously constricted in there. Um, the top of the sail plate's a hot mess. All sorts of dings and, and waviness and everything in that. I don't know if you can see this down here. There's a big old flat spot here. I found some filler in here. There's a big old flat spot there. Um, it's uh, about 5.30 already, taking a little bit longer than I thought. So I may have to forego any gross metal work, which I kind of wanted to do to get some of these dings out and just get it painted instead. You can see all the mass of red that's in there. Uh, and this ended up being more lead like I thought. So I kind of tried to fare that in a little bit. So that's all right. I'm going to take from this thing, I'm going to take a punch from behind and just try to flatten that out a little bit and then fill that with weld metal. And then also uh, continuing on with inside the channel and get that cleaned up and I should should be able to get it in paint tonight. Don't see why not. 
But for now, I'm going to grab a bite to eat and get back at it. Got most of the sanding done. I'm not going to worry about anything else. Didn't go to bare metal absolutely everywhere. These corners are a pain to get into, obviously. And uh, I got some a little bit more work to do on that. Try to get some of the body cleaned up. There's obviously red dust all over the place. But uh, for the most part, this thing, besides uh, final prep with 60 grit, DA is ready to paint and the, uh, the weld repair. So what I'm going to do right now, mix up some fiberglass and get the fiberglass on the spot welds and everything that have little pits in it, which like I said is, is most of them, and get that covered and get that curing so that if I get any overspray on it, it's not going to mess that up. And then I'm going to go on to the weld repairs with these holes here and try to fill this hole back in here a little bit and get that back to uh, a normal size. And then hopefully get into paint. It's uh, 6.15 if I didn't mention that, so I got about Oh, an hour, hour and a half or so of, of work time left before I really need to get that first coat on as far as being a school night and all. Alright, so I used that guy to get in there and in there. So that came out pretty good. I uh, got some fiberglass filler on the various spots to cover all my stuff. That's a hot mess right there. I probably shouldn't have done that. But uh, for the most part, I got all my little nooks filled. I got a pay a little bit more attention next time for this one I want to get the the base levels in there and then I may try to square that off I'm not sure just to make a nice hard edge there um, but otherwise I got all the little divots filled up and uh, now I'm going to start taping off and uh, 60 grit this thing with the DA sander and get some paint on there it's seven o'clock so the clock is ticking all right all prep taped off ready to go two wet coats coming at you now before I get started I decided not to do the weld repairs especially down here because I'm afraid as I repair this dent that I'm gonna crack or somewhat deform or something like that so I'm gonna just leave that and I also decided not to do this one um, but I did I did kind of flatten it out a little bit but I'm just gonna leave those for later not too worried about overspray here but I did some taping on on uh, the stuff where I'm gonna really try to get in this crevice so I don't want a lot of overspray in there because that's gonna be relatively close and, and uh, aimed. Everything else is just going to be kind of residual overspray. I'm not that concerned. All right, I obviously stopped painting there. If you can see here, you can really see it on the red how it's all splotchy little dots and everything. I've never had the paint lay down like that for me before. So what that told me essentially is that the paint was well on its way to curing up and uh, activated and I would be wasting my time and potentially getting a bad paint job if I laid down the epoxy primer. Since that is the base layer, you know, the, the foundation of the entire paint job is gonna rest on this. So I'm not gonna take that chance and I'm not gonna waste that time having to strip it all back out again. So. I'll, uh, I'll leave it like this until next visit, get it cleaned up, and try again. Morning everybody, welcome back. 16th of December, Sunday, about 8.30. Going to continue working, I got all day again. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this dent down here a little bit with the stud welder, try to get that pulled out, and then hopefully get those little holes that I showed you filled back in, and then continue stripping. Here's what I had on my aborted paint job, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm still going to try and get that hole fixed. And then I think I'm just going to continue stripping up the passenger side here. And again, give myself enough time to get everything painted before I need to get out of here. But if I could get this entire side and the rear done, that'd be awesome. But we'll see how long it's going to take. Ordered new count of uh, draw pins is what these are called. The uh, studs for the stud welder to help pull out dents. So these are from Motor Guard. Picked them up from Amazon, of course. 500 of them here. I think it was like $17.51, something like that. Um, definitely under 20 bucks. And for the price per piece, it's cheaper than uh, Harbor Freight was. And I've got two pins here, and I'll try to show it to you. The pin on the right is the Harbor Freight one, and the pin on the left is this Motor Guard one. And you can see the tips on the Motor Guard on the left here, very nice and round. It's got an extra little... Um, they call it a striker tip. Extra little bit there. The thing would focus. And then you can see on 
the Harbor Freight one, at least I think. Tips all nasty, kind of flat, not very well, done. And the bottoms here, I think I had mentioned that I was having problems on some of them, getting them into the, the bit of the tool because these pieces were all cut and they would get flattened out. So you can see here that it's nice and square on the motor guard one. So definitely the quality is leaps and bounds ahead. So we'll see how they work. All right, so I'm going to start working on this dent here. Big old hole here where I just lost metal from replacing the rear balance and from this strip here. And then a big hard crease right here. Pretty good shot here, good shot here. Uh, this has been worked. Obviously you can see by these holes, so what the, what the previous owner did at some point was use a slide hammer here and instead of a stud welder like I've got, just screw in a sheet metal screw through there and then using the slide hammer and pounding it out. And if you can, I don't know if you can see too well, but these holes are raised, that's just from that happening. So I got my stud welder here, I'm going to use those new studs that I mentioned and just see if I can work some of this out. The crease is going to be the thing that I'm going to work on the most. I'll see if I can get these parts out as well and get this, uh, get this better than it is now. Alright, well it's coming slowly but surely. Got this one pulled out, this one pulled out. Nothing that a little uh, filler slash hammer and dolly work won't do. I'm going to dump one right there. Do that real quick. Again, a clean surface is Necessary to get the, the weld connected there. Repeat the path. I am using the Harbor Freight pins a little bit just because I don't want to waste them. Alright, definitely better than it was. Except for that seam right in there. So I'm going to grind this guy down and get this flattened up. I really... Um, I got the, the boot area taped off, masked off for painting. I'd really rather not go in there. Can't really get in here with a hammer anyway. But um, grind these flush and work on them a little bit more and then go back to this crease. But, uh, but that's the process. So moving on. Pretty much got this stuff out, at least good enough for now. <coughs> so now I'm working on this crease. Figured I'll try to bring the bottom out first this way and then try to bring that top down because that it snakes snakes in kind of so I got to bring it down and out I know I'm kind of zoomed in you didn't see my hand um, also as with anything as you as you get more experience your technique develops a little bit I found that probably should have known this and thought about this but relatively thin metal on on Dorothy here it's only 20 gauge metal so it's not too bad obviously I'm going to have a lot of work um, hardening in here and it's going to harden and stiffen it up and make it a little bit more brittle and tough so harder to move and harder to work but I found that if you lock the slide hammer down and don't go at it real hard and just kind of slowly but surely work it out that slide hammer seems to hang on a little bit longer I don't pull the um, pull the threads or the connection or whatever you want to call it I don't pull that out as like as easily so I think the most annoying part about the quality of these is this flared tip here, if you can see that where it's cut. I know I've pointed it out before, but more often than not, I've had to trim these down. Obviously not tough to do, but it's just an annoying thing that you got to deal with. Definitely better than it was. You can see that big crease is most of the way gone there. But what you can also see is a lot of the holes that the previous owner had put in are starting to connect now. So obviously I've got some thin metal right here. Not quite sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Probably going to have to cut a patch, uh, which is unfortunate. But So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue stripping off the rest of the side here and kind of uh, see the extent of whatever work or damage or anything else that I got going on and make a hot mess in here. Rear wing is all stripped and I don't know, a little bit of the, the sill there. So I got the rest of the sill and the forward A post. Got the, uh, the door jam also. So I'm gonna finish up with that and then go back and start doing some weld repairs and things like that. 
another couple hours of work and this side's all stripped. So a couple surprises, not too bad. Uh, it's pretty good ding right here that had a little bit of body filler on it. You can see the heavy swirl. I'm not sure what the previous owner used for cutting um, sand it down. It looks like 30 grit on a wheel that he never really smoothed out. Anyway, uh, I knew about this spot down here where the seam and the, and the rear wing meet. I'm just going to leave that the way it is right now. Um, pretty good shot of lead and um, brazing and everything in here. Again, I'm just going to leave that. That's from the factory, a little sloppy. It's okay. Um, really, the only other concern I had is this crack here, unfortunately. You can see that it runs to about there, comes all the way down here, and it even scooches down a little bit right there. So I'm going to do um, small drill holes and everything like I did for the doors and try to fix that up. Hopefully I don't have the problems like I did on the doors. <clears throat> Excuse me. But otherwise, everything's cleaned up. Got about it just as clean as it did on the other side. Again, the problem areas that I really couldn't get into in here uh, in this corner and behind the, the bonnet slide piece here. But otherwise, I'm happy with it. And again, no uh, no real issues. So the uh, the path now is to get these welder pairs done. I also have a little spot under there. You can't really see that, but there's a little hole there. I gotta poke around in there a little bit and see what that's uh, the extent of that. But that looks like just a weld repair. Um, and then I'm gonna fill the holes and do the back here and figure out what I'm gonna do in the rear wing as far as make it a patch piece or whatever and then get those holes filled so that's the uh that's the path for the next little bit i got a couple holes drilled here i put uh took just a three inch angle grinder and just um, put some grooves in here to try to give me a little bit of an edge or a wedge should have done that in the doors i think just give me a little bit of a, a uh, cut out so i can fill it with weld metal and hopefully uh prevent the crack from happening again so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill these puppies in. All right, got that all done and cleaned up. Also took a um, burr wheel to, uh, to that stuff there. Don't really like the look of the burr, but I can't get in there otherwise. So uh, happy with what's going on up here. And now I'm going to look at this little spot underneath here. All right, pretty much nothing to that. Moving on. So I think I might try to cheat here a little bit. Cut out a piece of metal here. That'll get rid of that crease. And hopefully, maybe it'll allow me to fill in that piece of metal too. So it's a little bit of a complicated repair piece. Um, not, not horrible, probably. But uh, I'm going to go get a piece of metal here. Get a get a sized up and and see uh, see what I want to cut out so I don't cut too much and go from there. So you can see the little outline that I got there. So I'm going to cut that piece of metal out and I've got uh, a dono piece here standing by. We'll figure it out when we get there. There it is. There's the back side. You just see all the little, all those little bumps. If you can see those, those are from all the spot welds for the spot weld puller. Otherwise, it looks pretty good in there. So now, hopefully, I'll just make up a repair patch and call it good. Well, it's not my best work, but it should be good enough. Take a little bit of coaxing and everything as I get through it, but let's get it tacked in and see how it goes.
Alright, not bad. Not great, but not bad. Looks better than it did when I started. Got these two little holes here. I'm going to just weld them up real quick and then uh, call it good. Alright, so I'll just say that I'm glad that there is a tail light that goes here and a big silver bumper that goes right here. That's, that's how I'll leave that. But, uh, but again, it is better than the way I started this morning. Still some work to do in here. I'm not sure if I'll hammer and dolly or if I'll just uh, put some filler, maybe a couple more stud pulls here. Um, but that's going to be about it for me today. I might work on the front sail plate there to try to get that stripped off. But uh, I think I'm coming back tomorrow, so I'm looking at painting tomorrow. About 3 o'clock, going to call it. Got a lot of the uh, bulkhead, or I should say the top sail area done. Obviously the nooks and crannies remain where I get in with the wire brush and everything like that. I'm not real sure how I'm going to work these grills. Um, I'm afraid if I use a wire brush there, they're going to get caught up and, and start to beat on both the wire brush and the grates. So I may ask uh, on my favorite form how they did that. But otherwise, happy with, uh, happy with how that's coming out so far. No surprises. Some little random blaze mark right here. That's kind of interesting. The only other thing I've got to think about is this hole right here is for the antenna. I don't intend to put a radio in the car. I have no evidence that there was ever speakers in here. I believe the speakers were screwed. Uh, into this plate or somewhere uh, outside of the fact that there's a radio antenna hole in it so I'm not sure if that was always put there and it was blanked or what I gotta look into that but uh, we'll see welcome back it's Monday quick turnaround back over here the whole objective I know I've been teasing this this whole video is to actually get paint down so that's what I'm gonna do tonight gotta pick the boy up from basketball practice so I'm a little bit on a uh, timeline here but my intention is to get the rest of this front sail plate done get that taken care of and cleaned up and then if I have some time I may start to work a little bit on the top of the bulkhead here I'm not sure again down here on the front I intend to get that all in um, Raptor liner so I'm not going to strip that now because I'm not ready to paint that stuff but uh, but we'll see I'm not sure if I'm even going to attempt to get this place cleaned up on the front here but we'll see so that's uh, the path ahead for tonight and uh, what time is about 3.30 now, about 7 o'clock. I need to be laying paint down to, to make, uh, make my timing window. About 4.40, got the top sail plate all cleaned up. Started to play around down here a little bit. And that's just going to be, that right there probably is going to be one visit with all the nooks and crannies and everything else. So I'm not, just not going to deal with that tonight. Um, got the interior kind of vacuumed out there in preparation for just wiping everything down. Still have to mask everything off. And uh, I think now, since I've got some time yet, I'm going to take a hammer and dolly to the uh, rear sail plate here. Big old flat spot here. Big old flat spot here. And a, and a pretty good flat spot there. If you remember a while ago, I had taken care of this part. That's uh, not too bad. Still a little bit of damage there. So I'm just going to go around and, and play with it a little bit. And I'll take too much time to see what I can do. So this is that radio antenna hole that I was telling you about. And if you look right there, I don't remember if I mentioned this. Got a little bit of a divot there. It looks like almost a drill bit got in there. I don't ever remember doing that, but maybe I did. So I'm going to fill that real quick before I get crazy with the rest of the stuff here. And this is that hole I forgot to do this last night. And essentially what, uh, what the deal is here is the bottom of the hole on the other side is about four tenths of an inch or so. So that, that bottom of the two kind of concentric holes that you can see there, this one up here should be the one that's filled in. So I'm going to take some weld metal to that and try to fill that in. And then I've got a small drill bit here that's a little bit smaller than the, than the size of the holes that they're supposed to be and try to save some of that. Obviously with the weld metal it's going to be a lot harder of a, of a drill bit because the metal is harder so I'm hoping not to uh, fill up too much of the good hole. We'll see how, if I get lucky. Alright so I got that guy filled in. No problems there. A little bit lower than the surface so I'm just going to fill that with filler I'm not going to try to grind that down and, and give myself a big old divot there this filled in really nice I got lucky with that I didn't even have to redrill the hole so that's about just about where the other one is close enough for government work and all I did for the sail plate here I didn't work on it for a very long couple minutes I just took the dolly and smacked up underneath of it and kind of pounded those dents out at least uh, you know grossly if you can see under here there's really no support for that guy at all so even towards the ends there the support isn't really in touch with it in contact the whole way 
So that's going to be, a, I'm sure, a uh, oil can issue probably no matter what I do. So there'll be a little bit more work on that, but not a whole lot. So now I'm going to take 60 grit to everything. I already got the back in 60 grit, but I'm probably going to hit it again. There's some spots now that I've lifted up and some, uh, some minor areas of, of red still left. And then start wiping it down with wax and grease remover and getting ready for paint. Moving along. 6.30. Two applications of wax and grease remover. Talc's coming out clean. So that's good. So again, I'm painting the entire passenger side here from stem to stern. The top of the uh, forward sail plate here and the grates. I never did really come up with a great solution for the grates, but I think they're okay. And then the rear, rear sail plate and then the whole entire boot area. So I think what I'll do is I'll kind of start from the back here and work my way um, all on the boot up there on that sail plate and work my way from left to right. Since I'm not painting any of the left side of the car, I can kind of favor the right side. Give me room down this side come around here and then once I get up to here I'm not going to paint any stuff around in the front here so I'm going to push it towards the back there making sure I'm not going to get too close and then be able to put up and get uh, get adequate uh, access to this stuff up in here so uh, again the paints inducing I mixed up uh, about 12 ounces or so I think yeah just uh, just a bit over 12 ounces I think that uh, hopefully should be enough for two wet coats. If it's not, uh, that'll, that'll kind of be a bummer. But uh, we'll see how it goes. So I'm giving that 30 minutes, grab a bite to eat here, and blow the car down one more time and get ready to go. All right, 30 minute paint indu induction and uh, everything else all ready to shoot. I'm going to leave the camera set up here. It's on the tripod, so the angle's not the best, but you're going to get what you're going to get here, I guess. So uh, here we go, first coat. One wet coat down. Not too bad. A couple tricky spots, but nothing, uh, nothing horrible. Inside the, the boot lid channel there was probably the worst. And then up here around the grates, um, in between, if you can see that from the rear of the grate housing, there's that little lip. It's only about a quarter inch wide in between there. I, that was a little tricky to get in there. But otherwise, uh, look, looks good to me. Got good coverage, and I mixed up enough paint, so that's a good. Uh, bellwether for when I do color this is 12 ounces of paint and I would be able to at least coat the entire car I think with one coat at 12 ounces maybe 14 so that's a that's a good uh, good idea of how much paint it takes so now I'm in my 30 minute hold in between coats I'll lay the second coat down and then I'll uh, wrap it up for the night in the meantime I think I'm going to work on some uh, minor stuff on the bonnet see if I can't make that worse or you know better got about another 15 minutes or so before the paint's ready to hit with the second coat so I have this, uh, I'm in the passenger side uh, headlight bucket, I guess you could say, in this area. So it took a ding. This was all filled in with uh, filler from the previous owner. You can see a couple of my weld repairs to fill the holes that he used to, to pull out the area. So if you look at the curve there, you can see that it's done in pretty good. And then there's a bunch of um, probably hammer marks there. Almost look like picks. They're, they're pretty sharp. I don't know if he had a really sharp hammer or what, but uh, I'm going to have to fill those. There's not much I can do with that. But now what I'm trying to do, you can see I've already put one pin in there. I'm just trying to pull this out, and I'm hoping in doing so 
this recess here where that thing curves will tend to straighten out a little bit. I know that's going to be hard metal in there. I'm not sure if it's going to work. But if you look at the other side, it's nice and smooth and not, you know, nice and straight. But only is, not only is it nice and straight, but it's not a hard crease um, like, like this has become. So that's, uh, that's going to take some work here. And I'm just kind of playing around a little bit. Like I said, waiting for the paint to dry. We'll see what happens. So as you can see, the metal cracked right there. So whatever went on right here with these little dings and everything, I don't know if that thinned out the metal. But like I said, once you can take a smack like that, this stuff brittles up. The metal gets work hardened and it, it brittles up. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to clean these uh, burrs off of here, the, the used up studs. I'll probably have to pull a little bit more here. But in actuality, I think I might prefer this. Um, I need to pull out here a little bit also. Anyway, I think I might prefer this because it's going to hopefully allow me to kind of round that corner off with um, hammering it over a little bit and then actually filling it with weld metal and getting a, a, a good repair in there. So we'll see. All right, so I got that ground down. It didn't uh, straighten out okay. I've got to put uh, a pin here and pull out there. And then if you can see, this is, I don't know if I can grab, there it is. You can see that crease there, that half moon shape kind of thing going on. That's, uh, you know, the ding happens here. This metal rises and that metal falls and it kind of makes a, a crater a little bit, kind of backs up amongst, in, into itself almost like a wave, I guess. So I'm not so sure that I, I can get in there with my fingers, but there's no way I'm going to get a dolly or anything in there. I'm not sure how or if I'm going to be able to flatten that out. I don't think uh, it would be a good idea to pull that crease, maybe. We'll uh, think about it. But anyway, my timer's going to go off here in a little bit to get for my second coat of paint. So I'm going to get ready to do that and then call it a night. Two wet coats. Happy with the way that it came out. I haven't looked incredibly close because it's still wet, but I don't think I have too many instances of cratering or anything like that. It went down really well. All right, everybody, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. That's three visits crammed into this video, so that's why it's probably going to be about 30 minutes plus by the time I get done editing. A lot of stuff done, though. A lot of painting, a lot of body work, a couple well repairs, all that kind of good stuff. So, um, tease, tease, tease the epoxy primer on everything and finally got it done. So, that's probably going to be about it for me for the week, but I'll see you sometime this weekend. So, have a good rest of your week. Good luck. Cheers.